It's episode seven on the New York City vlog, and today we're gonna go to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. We take the ferry tour with the National Park Service. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know if you're planning to visit. The best experience is you take the subway around town and you just never know what it's gonna look like when you come up underground. We're at the Whitehall stop, yes. close to the very end of Manhattan for the Statue of Liberty. When we got off the subway, we were a little disoriented, but I knew that the water was close to the park. So we headed in that general direction and tried to find our way. And by the way, this beautiful building to our right, this is the National Museum of the American Indian. This looks like a fabulous place to visit. It was closed during our stay. This little building in front of us, this is the Bowling Green subway stop. Now this would have been the closest subway stop to the Statue of Liberty cruise station. We saw the ferry over to the left, but the main entrance was over to the right and it was a security building similar to TSA at the airport. We got our tickets in advance. They said to arrive 30 minutes early and to expect large crowds. We really didn't need to be that early and we could have bought our tickets on site. There were no long lines. There's a security check for the Statue of Liberty Ferry, just so you know. And if you happen to bring mace like I do, they're not gonna have a place to store it for you. I was allowed to stash it in a bush outside, but uh, just keep that in mind if you travel with something like that. You can't bring it on the ferry. We ended up being probably an hour early because we weren't really sure where we were going. And they let us go ahead and board the next ferry. So France gave us this statue because France aided America in the World War. Oh, okay. you know that? For the Revolutionary War. Okay. Without France's help, we would have lost to the Brits. Be sure to note that Statue City Cruises is the only legitimate cruise company that takes you out to the Statue of Liberty. The website warns you that there's lots of scammers that will try to approach you outside the ticket area to try to sell you fake tickets. Here's what to expect on the ferry. So there are seats on top and there's seats on two different levels. If you get seasick, you might want to bring some Dramamine. I think it's a short ride, but it is, you know, kind of wobbly. If there's any rain, you are going to have wet seats on the top. So people like me and my son who get car sick and motion sick, we want to be on top, but all the seats are soaking wet. Um, so, if your feet hurt, you may want to bring like a waterproof rain jacket or something uh, to wipe off the seat. There are restrooms in here and there's also a snack bar on here. Plenty of room. Bye bye New York City! This is America's symbol of freedom right here. Windy freedom. lovely ride. It is windy and rainy. It's always colder on the water so bring a jacket when you come. Unless it's like middle of the heat wave then maybe you don't need one but you can expect it to be a little cooler out here because it's real windy on the water. There's a place to eat. You can't go on top inside Statue of Liberty right now because of COVID but um, the island is open. Thumbs up for the Statue of Liberty. Thank you. There's a big patio area. The beautiful view of the city. There's a museum. There's a gift shop, refreshments, all here on out. 
It's not Ellis Island. I almost said Ellis Island. It's Liberty Island. So between the wind and the construction, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me, but underneath the Statue of Liberty is actually a fort that was built to protect the New York Harbor and it's shaped like a star with 11 points. The fort was built between 1808 and 1811. So it's been here quite a while. It's a very historic site. You can see it behind me, but it's under construction. So if you watch any of those conspiracy theories on TV about the Freemasons, they say there are several Mas Masonic symbols around the base of the fort and in the grass area in the, on the grounds. So whatever you think about that, you're welcome to leave me a comment below. And this is one of the biggest seagulls I've seen in a long time. He's hungry. And this is the photo spot right in front. We're here on a Monday in June. So these are the kind of crowds you can expect here. But there's plenty of space for everybody. So here's where you can enter if it was not under construction. I think the combination of COVID, they probably took the opportunity to shut it down and do construction at the same time. But they have another set of turnstiles here to enter. Now we're gonna hit up the visitor center and the gift shop. There's also plenty of tables and a nice park area. If you wanted to sit and bring a picnic lunch, if it was a lovely day, there's trees and shade. It would be a really nice place to come and sit and eat some lunch. If you get hungry on Liberty Island, like me, there is a cafeteria style restaurant and they do take your temperature and want you to check in for contact tracing when you arrive and it's a pretty long wait, so you're going to want to allow some time. But uh, you know, you're going to want to spend some time here, so I don't want to get hangry. There is a turkey on a statue along with a hamburger. After a nice lunch, we head over to the Statue of Liberty Museum. It's a 10 minute movie, and they only let a very small amount of people in, so the line at the entrance is for the movie. This is the artist that created the Statue of Liberty. This is an interesting pictorial history of how the Statue of Liberty was used over the years for various uh, propaganda or, you know, political statements or, you know, the different things that it symbolized. This is the plaque and it's hard to see because of the reflection. It was a gift from the people of the Republic of France to the people of the United States. This Statue of Liberty enlightening the world commemorates the alliance of the two nations in achieving the independence of the United States of America and attests their abiding friendship. October 28, 1886, it was inaugurated. get your photo with the torch or the face. So we spent about two hours on the island and we really took our time and we sat down and had something to eat as well. 
and the ferry leaves every 20 minutes between Liberty Island, Ellis Island, and New York City Battery Park. So now we're headed over to Ellis Island. Ellis Island is a federally owned island, and between the years of 1892 to 1924, Ellis Island processed nearly 12 million immigrants. The main building is the National Museum of Immigration, and on the south side, it includes the old hospital area, and it's only open for guided tours. Lucky enough to be here when the sun comes out, boy, it warms up real fast. So we are now pulling into Ellis Island. Thank you. the registry room that could hold up to 5,000 people who were waiting on their status to be inspected and registered by immigration service officers. It has been restored to its appearance of what it used to look like between 1918 and 1924. One of the most astounding exhibits that we looked at was regarding the healthcare. The doctors on site had nearly six seconds to evaluate each immigrant as they passed through to look for various diseases and determine if they were healthy enough to pass the health screening. If you were marked with an X, you had further questioning. So you can actually come here and do a search for immigration records of your own family members. So before I had kids, I was very fascinated in ancestry and researching my ancestry. So I would have loved to have spent time in that gallery researching our relatives that came over. However, I was not prepared. I didn't bring my notes on the names of my ancestors. They said that you have to put your name in and reserve a time slot and it's a $10 fee to use the station for research. So if that's something you wanna do, I would plan ahead and bring some names with you and whatever information you have, and then you can find the records and then of course you can pay to have them printed and saved for you. So that's like a whole trip in and of itself to come out here and do some real records digging to find all of our ancestors that came over to America. So that's pretty cool. On the back side of the museum, there's beautiful views of New York City, and there's this big round wall that goes around the perimeter, and it has the names of all the immigrants written on there. See if you can find your family members on here. Okay, folks, that concludes the three-hour tour. Where are my Gilligan's Island fans? The three-hour tour. We did a three-hour tour, I believe, at the 9-11 Museum, and a three-hour tour at the Statue of Liberty. We kind of cut Ellis Island Short is an immigration museum. We didn't stay there as long as we probably should have, but we have a tired family and we want to hit up the Brooklyn Bridge later. So, um, you know, if you really want to spend a thorough amount of time at Ellis Island, I would recommend planning a little bit longer time. Now it's food, Brooklyn Bridge. It's gonna get a man. You're gonna film this day?